Hey everyone, Tim here from Flipspark. So, I've been getting a few questions recently on my YouTube and Instagram account as to how I've set up my Volca Techno Station. What rack am I using? How am I mixing them all? What effects am I using? And so on. So I thought I'd walk through my current setup. Bear in mind that it changes every two weeks anyway as I move the Volcas around and rewire things as I try out new ideas in the studio, but still, here it is today. So. To answer the first question, the rack I'm using is actually a rack called Sequins. I'm pretty sure that Sequins is a brand of rack actually made by Korg. I got it from my local music, music shop, um, but I've recently checked them out and they don't have any more. And then looking online, I can't see any online either. So maybe they sold out. Maybe I'm just lucky that I got one. Don't know, but that's it. I didn't make it myself. It's a purchased rack. Um, in terms of the Volkers, how I've set them all up. so. Basically the way I've arranged them is the middle row is what I consider the melody makers. So I've got the Volca bass, the new bass, the keys, and the FM. The bottom row are my drums. So Volca sample, sample two that is, Volca drum, and Volca beats. They all go into this Volca mix over here. And then the top row are my sort of incidentals, my occasionals, my old Volca sample, which I use for vocal samples, one shot stabs, that sort of thing. Volca kick, which I actually mo most often use for toms rather than kick or bass. And the Volca mod, which I don't use too much because it's too complicated to use. Um, and they all go into this mix here. Um, power, how they're powered. So there's been a few questions as to how I've managed to reduce the noise of my Volcas. They are pretty noisy, actually. Um, and actually, if I unmute the channel quickly, you should be able to hear that noise coming through. So there is a bit of noise from the Volkers, but the way I've uh, alleviated it a little bit is they're all independently powered with um, third-party uh, wall warts, I think they call them. Not the official Korg ones, just cheap ones from my local uh, electronics shop. So I have found in the past, if you use the power from the mix, um, it somehow creates some kind of ground loop or something, and it does add a lot of noise. So I do recommend you power them independently. Um, definitely worth the money spent there. Um, so synchronizing them. Um, so the four middle ones, as I said before, are my melody makers. And I control the whole setup from my uh, Keystep Pro over here. So coming out of the Keystep Pro on MIDI out one, this actually is sent out through to a MIDI splitter down here, where it's split into four, and that independently then lands up in each of the four Volkers. I'm very much a melody maker kind of guy. If you look at my doorless jams, you can see I definitely love making melodies. So I often play them here on the, on the keyboard, record the pattern, and usually a four bar loop using the Arturia key step, um, sometimes chaining patterns together to get 16 bar loops for good old progressive trance and that sort of thing. So yeah, the middle row I control directly via MIDI. Um, the drums are also hooked up with MIDI and they are hooked up to the Beat Step Pro over here. So again, the MIDI out from the Beat Step Pro is hooked into another uh, MIDI splitter, four of them. And three of them end up in these Volkers, one, two, three. And the fourth one ends up in the machine, which I use for my other doorless jams with the rest of my gear in my studio, which I might show at the end. Uh, so they are sending direct MIDI from the BeatStep Pro. And I will say as well, both the, essentially the bottom two rows of Volkers are all receiving MIDI clock from the BeatStep Pro and the KeyStep Pro. So when I trigger off the BeatStep Pro as my master, KeyStep Pro is slaved, I'll explain that in a second. All the Volkers are triggering off um, are all in sync. So to answer that quick question, why the Beat Step Pro is the master and not the Key Step Pro, I have hooked them up with the clock sync cable from the Beat Step Pro through to the Key Step Pro. Not the other way around because I found that when the Key Step Pro was the master, um, I could hear some drift coming through the clock cable and it would cause especially the 16th hats and 16th tambourines and that sort of thing to, you could, you could definitely hear it drifting in and out. If I reversed it, it wasn't as noticeable with the um, the melodies and such. So in the end, Beat Step Pro is my big master play button. Um, the top row, the incidentals, the way they're synced up is they're just synced up with the normal sync cables from Korg. So I have to manually push play, uh, make the melodies and push play on each individual synth. But that's the only way you can use the mod in the end. This one is usually just used for some basic toms, so that's okay. And again, the sample, it's kind of more appropriate to pattern that into the Volker anyway, rather than using Key Step Pro. I will say here, I wish, I wish, I wish um, Korg would do a Volker M1. I'd love to replace this with like a Volker M1, a proper uh, rompler, but hey, we can only dream. Um, so, audio, how's the audio set up? So, the 
middle row, the main melody makers, once again, the audio outs from these are independently going into my little mixer here, my little Mackie mixer. One, two, three, four um, are the bass, new bass, keys, and FM. So this is so that I have independent control of their volumes and I can do a little bit of EQing where necessary. Quite important to lock the bass out of sometimes the other synths other than the bass line, so it keeps the mix clean. And of course I've got a send as well. So I'm experimenting with different effects. Right now I've just picked up off um, a local secondhand shop, a Strymon Volante for a dub techno. I've also got some other Strymon pedals particularly love the blue sky, amazing pedals, highly recommend. It's kind of key to my sound really at the moment. So yeah, everything's being mixed independently on this mixer, not the Vulcan mixers. The drums, as I said before, are all going into the Vulcan mix here, um, and that, the group mix of this essentially is going into tape in, funnily enough. Not enough channels on the mixer, but it does work. It goes into tape in, and that is the drums. The incidentals at the top um, go into the other mix, and they all come into the fifth channel, which should really be called Vulcan Mix. Um, to, again, depending on which one I've chosen to use, can do a bit of mixing and a bit of effects on that. So that's the audio and the effects. Um, some people ask about the Chaos Pad. So down here, Chaos Pad. What's happening here is I actually have two mixers. This is my main mixer for the rest of my gear in my studio. The master out from the Volkers goes into one channel. All the other synths in my studio go into independent channels. Um, but the master from the smaller mixer is going into the Chaos Pad. And I basically use this Chaos Pad for uh, faux breakdowns just by a, I pretty much only use one preset, the high pass reverb. And I either use my finger to kind of modulate it a little bit or um, just turn it on with a hold. So if I play some audio, let's unmute the Volkers. Hit play. Should be hearing that. And when I choose to, So uh, I, really, I really kind of love and pretty much need to have that kind of control in my, my jams to, otherwise you just get this endless beat and it gets kind of tiring. Um, and yeah, so another question that has come up is what is my favorite Volker and what is my least favorite Volker? So maybe first I'll go through and explain my interpretation of the uh, unique sound and role of each Volker in the mix. So here you have your Volker bass and I consider this to be the warm synth and the Volker keys, which is the cold synth. Each has a different role. You don't want all your synths to be warm and fat, otherwise you end up with a big muddy, muddy mix. The Volca New Bass is your 303-esque synth. Not the same sound as a 303 or TD3, which I have over here. It does sound different, but pretty close. But I actually think it has, its, has a charm of its own. Um, and usually I end up reaching for the New Bass actually instead of the TD3, just because it's easier to program for, for one thing. You've got your Volca FM, which is your bright digital FM synth. Um, not really necessarily my taste, but does I do find a good use for it in the mix anyway. Um, the Volca Mod, again, not my favorite synth because it's quite complicated to set up and use. It has a unique sound, but um, yeah, I just do find it quite tricky to get it, to get a decent melody out of this. The Volca Kick, which some people use for bass, um, and I tend to use it for toms rather than kick or bass. It's kind of cool, but I don't use it that often. Um, and then at the top, I guess I'll include the old Volker sample, which I use musically which for the um, for one-shot samples, um, stabs, chord stabs, vocal shots, that sort of thing. So of the synths, the synth that I tend to reach for the most and probably couldn't part with is probably the Volker bass. For whatever reason, it's the easiest to get a really big fat sound out of. Um, I love myself a good fifth bass line you know, by taking the second oscillator and raising it up seven semitones. Um, yeah, that'll be my favorite synth of all of them. Um, of the drums, sample two, great little thing. The drum, Volker drum is really powerful, it's underrated, and then the Volker beats. So probably my favorite here would be the Volker drum. This is the most unique, and I think it's a real uh, gem of its own. The Volker beats is pretty shit. It, it does sound tinny and toyish, I have to admit. Um, and I have a theory that the reason why some people think the Volker, the Volkers in general sound toyish and tinny and not that high quality is because possibly they've heard the Volker Beats, maybe even the Volker Beats only, and then they've ended up judging the whole range because of that. I think this is the one Volker that is probably in need of an update because it does sound pretty lame. <laughs> I very rarely use that other than maybe the hats sometimes. So yeah, that's my favorite and it's my least favorite. So as a final little thing, I might do a quick jam and just show you how I structure out my songs and my doorless jams. So let's have a look. I'll first of all unmute the, Vol the Volkers. 
hit play. So this Volk Keys is hooked up to the Strum and Volante for the dub techno vibes. Remembering that the audio is routing into this mixer and it's getting heaps of send just going to the dub delay. Set Pro, um, this channel, track, track 4, is routed to the Volker base. Um, I memorized all the channels. This is channels 9, 10, 11, 12. So here, can't read it with one hand, there you go. Uh, channel 9. This should be a big fat pad. Let's see if I'm right. structuring the way I do my drums um, I usually have four patterns so I have pattern one is just your kick pattern two is your maybe like a closed hat and a little bit of an offbeat hat and then pattern three usually adds a clap or something and pattern four usually adds that top drum high level high frequency energy and then what I do to create a breakdown and a drop I would use the chaos pad, I'd throw in some high pass reverb like this, or often I just use a button just to hold it, and then I just change the drum pattern and then turn it off again. So I'll just try and do that with one hand. <laughs> timing. It's a bit of a shameless plug at the end and to answer the question of how do I come up with my doorless jams creatively, how do I come up with my bass lines and melodies and so on, I am making a product for the studio called Flipspark. It's a little card game to help you find inspiration in your music studio. So when I'm making my jam and I get stuck, I will refer to this and pull up the cards and create the four stacks of elements, instruments, patterns and effects and then shuffle them and turn them over. So elements is referring to parts of the song, in this case it would be lead, all good, and then I'll pick an instrument. These are quite high level, so recycled, so that might mean um, maybe load up an old sound or an old melody from a previous jam project, or I can refer to the number here, number 11, so I know in my studio that bass, new bass, keys is my 11th piece of kit. Pattern, paired melody, so that's fairly easy, pair it with another melody in the jam, and effects, modulate it. There's plenty of ways to do that, including using the LFOs and effects as well. So there you have it, Flip Spark, a card game for the music studio. Check out the other videos on the YouTube channel to get a bit more info on that. Otherwise, thanks for watching, catch you next time.